Yeah, real late hot 97. My name is Peter Rosenberg. And man, got a guy in the building today who's got a new record out, got some dope joints, um, been around for a minute, um, and a real, real New York representer who now has a lot going on, about to hit the road. My man Graf is in the building. What up, bro? What's up? What's up? What's up, man? Happy to be here, man. Yo, happy to have you. Tell, tell, tell the people the name of the album. Painkillers Reloaded. Painkillers Reloaded, man. I want y'all to really listen to this and get into it. And we've been bumping that joint, the Pete Rock uh, Royce record. Dope, dope, dope. That joint. That's like one of my favorite joints of the album, if not the favorite. Ooh, you got that, man. That's like that late. It, that, to me, it's like a late 90s Pete joint, that, the feel yeah, of it. Yeah, it is. As soon as he played that, I was like, oh, stupid. And you know what's crazy? I got four more with Pete in the stash just sitting there in the chamber, like click, click. Sitting there, yo. So let's um. So the uh, that album's out right now, right, right. And you can get it on iTunes, yeah, yeah, and yeah. all that. And you're hitting the road soon as well. Absolutely, yep. Uh, opening up for Royce the Five Nine. Yeah, man. Shout out to Royce and Kino. So we we going on this tour. It starts June first. He's in Canada now. So when he comes back into does uh, New York, we're going. I mean, not New York. It's this country. When he does the U.S. When does the U.S. doing the whole tour? Yep. And that, that's oh. that's great for you. You were saying this dude, that's your first time really going out yeah, man. on a national level, at I'm, least in a long, long time. I'm telling you, I'm always trapped in the East Coast, so this is my first real official tour. Like, I've been doing my own painkiller store we put together ourselves. We get in the van, go around, travel, do what we do. Like, I did a crazy-ass show at South by Southwest. It's probably the only show we really took outside the East Coast on our own. And that is my really first official tour. Now, you, have an, you, you were signed to a deal a long time ago. Yeah. When did you first, like that? What we talking about? Like ten years ago that you got your deal, yeah. correct, right? I had more than one. I, my first first deal was oh three oh four. Epic Sony. Sony. Yeah, yeah. Epic Sony. And I was like, a, that's when they was giving out the big ass budgets and all that because I had the big buzz that. in the street. Yeah. You got one of those. Got those. Yeah. Got that. Yes. How'd you get that? Who'd that come through? That was through Dave McPherson at that time. And yeah. and w w how did you get to the point of getting that deal? I was so hot in the streets, just off the freestyle. I was a K Slay mixtapes and all of that. Like I always been an artist that was on the concrete putting that working in the street. I know that grind. Actually pressing up 10,000 mixtapes and going to schools and going to projects and handing them out physically in a rap van so people could see me. Like, I'm I'm from the era where you, I shake your hand, I touch, I want to see the people. I can't just sell downloads. I got to sell the experience. And, 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 and where are you saying? from? Jamaica, Queens. Always, born and raised. Yep. I'm from Jamaica to Island, too, and Jamaica, Queens. So you're so. Jamaican and Jamaican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I always think people must find it funny when... Uh, they're not from New York or haven't spent a lot of time here. And someone's like, yo, I'm from, yeah, from Jamaica, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And they don't realize that they just mean Queens. Yeah, they're like, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you're an interesting guy because you, you, you're a guy you see around. Like, you're out. You're on the grind. You're, right. you're pressing flesh. You're passing out music. Right, um, right. You're hustling. But you, A, have a name. And, B, you're not annoying and aggressive, right. you just want to you just want to perform your music and let people hear you because when they do, they generally tend to be like, "Oh, this is a guy who actually has a lot of lyrics, has right, a lot right. to say, right? Who's a real MC?" So I think that's very cool. So you get the first deal back then, and what what happened with the Sony situation after that? I think uh, that something happened with some type of I don't know if it was corruption or what, but that whole floor got fired. Like I literally came to the label one day and there was no twenty third floor. I was like, "Okay, so where's my deal at?" Like everybody got fired for some kind of budgets. Or whatever the hell was going on. So all my deals that got messed up or eradicated was out of my control. Like that deal, something ha happened with the higher ups out it's the window. Just, it's just it's just gone. Yeah, then you had your money though. Oh, I got the bread. That was cool. But check this out. Now, second deal I had, I, I went with Rockefeller when um Dane brought me over to Rockefeller when Jay and, and them were still together, and he brought me and Kanye over there at the same time. Actually, I was with Kanye at that time, and um in the middle of that deal was when the Jay Dane beef happened. So that that whole thing fell apart. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. Like, I was like, I got bad luck or something was going on here. How, you know how did that? How did that end up happening? How did Dame find you? He just heard, he just knew you from the street, also. Um, yeah, I think we just like, bubbling just, out there. Yeah, just Dame was like a hundred man. I think he's one of the dopest execs in his business, in my opinion, and he's a good person. And he just knew us from just being you know, on the scene type of thing. You know what I mean? Just you know, everybody just know each other type of thing. And we ended up doing a deal over there with him, and then that just fell apart just from their issues, nothing to do with me. So I never had the opportunity to put out a project on a on a real label. Because there's always some some crap going on, and, you know and and Kanye was going over there at the same time. Yeah. So when the, when the split happened, Dane brought both of us over there, but J, but Kanye made a decision to go with Jay. I ended up going with Dame. I felt like I had to be more loyal to Dame. Like you know what, I'm gonna just go with Dame because he brought me here. You know what I'm saying? I was always the two the, the super loyal guy. Like I always arrive with who I'm with, and that's just how I've just been. You know what I mean? For better or for worse. 
Yeah, yeah. sometimes it don't work out that right. way. Right. Like listen, wise. listen. Sometimes when you're a loyal person, you have to be, but that doesn't mean it's always going to be a win for you. Yeah, business wise, it, it normally is not. It, right. It, and sometimes it feels like those who are disloyal end up get. They, they, that's why they're disloyal because there's a big opportunity. I'm not, and I'm not saying right. that about Kanye. Yeah, he wasn't. He just made the decision that worked for him. Right, right, I right. I can't knock that. No, no, I'm not at right now. You yeah, know I'm saying? not referring to that at all. But I just mean in general, like, right. You, if you catch someone who may not be, they may come off as disloyal. It's because they, they had an opportunity for money. Right. They took that opportunity. They passed on the loyalty. And um, sometimes those of us who are really loyal end up being like, damn, right. ain't that about a bitch? Right. But that's just how it happens. Yeah. And I guess I, I first got to meet you many of those years ago. Now at this point. Many right. years ago that I first met you. And I was getting your records, promos, uh, back on in the Epic days. Yeah. I, I was getting I was getting promo records back then. What, did, you, did you do any, like, cool collabs back in that era that never got to come out because of the label stuff? Um, or I, think, rec- I think we leaked everything, to tell you the truth. Yeah, we leaked all that. Every, every record I did back then, either we leaked it or it got released some type of way. Who are some of the people you're most proud to have collaborated with over the years? I was on the official... Beyonce remix for me, myself, and I when I was over there. Like, if you look on the B side of her vinyl, it's featuring Graf. Like, her father proved it or went out. I was like, oh, that's a nice accomplishment. Wow, that that's and the Genuine good. remix was the official remix, too. Which Genuine? Remember Endo's Jeans? Yeah. Genuine yeah. Endo's Jeans? That was an official remix released from them, too. So, those are two of my biggest accomplishments. So, over that there. was that was a moment when the label was, and, and for the record, that's like one of those things, at least back in the day, with where, where, real upside to signing with a label. Yeah. Because they will find those it. opportunities. Right. And I used to just do, like, they brought me to Beyonce one. They said, okay, we're going to remix it, jump on and see how you do it. I said, I'm going to body it. I know what I'm going to do already. So they gave me the green light. My father heard it, liked it, and it was released officially. Like, it was on the B-side of her vinyl. I was like, okay, that's an accomplishment. That's a check they go into. I'll tell you right, right now, there. being on the In Those Jeans um, remix would be Action Bronson's dream. Oh, yeah? He loves In Those Jeans. That's crazy. <laughs> He's a big Genuine fan. You know what's crazy? Let me tell you something. This is why I always say my name, Graf, y'all, on every record. When I did that record, I didn't say my name on it. And when it went out, it went national and blew up. Like overnight, my name wasn't on it. Every state they thought it was somebody else. They thought it was ludicrous. They thought it was everybody but me. I was like, this sucks. I didn't. I, I ain't get credit for that record. Wow. And it blew up everywhere. It was added to radio across the country, and it was like, oh, it's ludicrous. No, it's Twister. No, it's, I was like, no, it's just me. Word. And that's one of those situations. That that's always weird, you know. The at the time, a relatively unknown artist getting an opportunity on a huge remix. Right. It can really it can really confuse people. Like one that I always remember. Is um, Shoop by Salt Shoop. and Pepper. Okay, yeah. Who's on? Uh, who's on that? I always thought it was Red Hot Lover Tone. Right. But I don't think it was. Who was it? The other, uh, the, the producer dude. I'm a fun. Yeah, that's who. That's who I thought it was. That's crazy. But okay. in retrospect, it's one of those things. It's a huge record, right. and there's a random rap on it. And when and sometimes you know, at, and listen, there are a lot of people's careers who start with the random rap. Yeah, but you got to say your name on that joint. Or you have to. You have to blatantly be like, this is who I am. That's why I was like, oh, my name Graf, y'all, on everything. All right, Shoop. Shoop is the lead single released by Salt and Peppa from Very Necessary. It's produced by Mark Sparks um, and Salt. The song features an uncredited verse by rapper Big Twan. Look at that. Never you're, heard you're of You're on Shoop, bro. That song could still get that song will still get played in like Somebody wedding or something. Situations. Right, yeah. right, right. Like that that record did really well for it's one of the biggest song pepper records. Word. And who knows what happened. Yeah. That's um, crazy. So you you have an album out right now. It's available on iTunes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you're moving around, you're gonna be moving around with Royce to five nine. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel? You know, I've been having this conversation a bunch recently. ASAP Fur just put out an album. Right. Which is really, really dope. That's what's up. And it seems it. it seems like a lot of Seems like a lot of times people in New York are so busy complaining about what's going on in hip hop in New York that they're not even checking for who actually is doing stuff in New York. It seems like that. Like we get overshadowed, overlooked some of the time. I don't know. I don't know what the hell be going on. Like in terms of uh, how people view our city anymore. You know what I'm saying? I well, it know, starts with yeah. our own self view, doesn't it? Doesn't it start it does. with the view here? It does. And that the fact that people, the fact that we have you know some people who are really big on a mainstream level here, right? Like right. Ferg and Rocky. And that people didn't really, there's some people who didn't embrace that. Right. And ran from it because when they first heard them, at the way beginning, they right. heard like that Houston influence. And they were just like, ah, this isn't New York rap. Right. And you got to get off that now. Because let me tell you something, man. If you can rap, this I, I spit this everywhere. It's like shut up and rap. If you know how to rap and put bars together, it's like your job as an MC to kill everything. I don't want to hear that. Like, it's not, you don't just stick the boom back because you're cheating yourself and cheating the fans. Body everything if you can rap. Other than that, then you can go do what you're doing. Well, also, it's unreasonable to expect that every 25-year-old kid 
Right. Who in their whole time growing up, Atlanta's been running rap. Why exactly. would you not be influenced? Houston ran rap. Why would you not be influenced and, by that? And they run rap in New York. So That's they, what I mean. If they're growing up here and they're listening to the radio, it sounds like, at one point, it sounded like Atlanta radio. You know what I'm saying? So how can you be mad? It's the same way right. how back in the 90s, if you were from the South, you probably sounded like you were from New York. Yeah, it worked. Because you were, that's what ran the radio. Right, so right. So you cannot get mad just exactly. because you're 45, and you can't get mad that these kids who are in their 20s are super influenced by um, Future or uh, whoever it may be who came before that. Right, Atlanta's right. been running it for so long. I mean, it's true. damn. It's true. Atlanta's run's getting to be almost as long as New York's was. Yeah, real, real talk. I ain't even peeped that. If you really think about it, it's been, uh, woo, it's been a long, long time. Right. So I, I get frustrated. So And then if you really paid attention, you watch the Rocky and uh, Ferg movie play out, mm -hmm. you keep listening to their whole body, you hear plenty in New York. It's, right. all, it's all over it. Like if, right. you, if you actually pay attention, you can feel that those guys are as Harlem as could be. They are. But you got to just listen to it. You can't just write stuff off. And, and by it's doing true. that, you're punishing the entire New York. Now you're not giving credit to the graphs and the pro eras and all these awesome things that are happening in our right, city. Right, 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 right. You gotta take it all. You gotta take it all for what it's worth, and take it all in, man. It's not. It's not fair, and it shouldn't be no separation, in my opinion. The music, it dope music is dope music. I don't care what it sounds like. If it's dope hip hop, you gotta just treat it as such. You know what I mean? All the complaining, man. Shut up. Do you do you hear do you, do you hear a lot of it though? I hear it too, and even with some of my music, because I I, I kill every type of beat. I don't care if it's a trap beat. I don't care if it's from Canada. I don't care if it's from the West Coast, European. If it's dope, I'm bodying it. I have no filter when I go in the studio. I make what I like and I like everything. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I hear that like, oh, why is Graf doing that? And I do what I want to do. As especially as an MC and as a creative soul, I just make music that I enjoy. I'm not making it for a particular purpose. I go in the studio and just make hot stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to hear that. I hate hearing that as a matter of fact. I'm like, I don't just make dope music. If it's dope, it's dope. And sometimes I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Sometimes and I'm the king. My record collection is just I have one of the ill boom bap collections of all time. Word. But if I was to, if some artist brought me a record and it was straight up boom bap with nothing else to it right now, right. I'd probably be like, this is cool, man. It's not, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, you, you got to spice dated. it up. You, you don't, you don't want to, exactly. You don't want to sound, it just got to be dope. It got to be hot. That's it. It can still be, man. Yeah. There, there are records, like, for example, I'm just throwing an example out there, but like on Kanye's album, mm. there are songs on there that I wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly describe as boom bap, but I wouldn't describe as trap or anything. I would just, they're just good. It's, it's, it's got to be good music. It's got to be hot, man. Like, it's, this isn't rocket science. This is just filling it talk. out. You just got to, it got to be dope. If it's whack, I don't care if it's boom bap. If it's trash and you use a whack rapper and you use a whack rapper, beat it regardless. If you're making trap and you whack, you just whack. Now, listen, are there times when I get frustrated and feel like everything sounds the same? Yeah, of course that happens. True. But you also have to recognize if you're someone, like, I'm 36, if you're someone who's getting older in the rap world, that your ear is not the same as 22-year-olds. Right. It just can't be. Think about the people who are 15 years older than you. And yeah, when you were listening to rap, they were like, ah. Uh, what is that? You yeah. have to. Come on. We got to be smarter than that. So the co point of the conversation, though, is about supporting New York music right. and having an ear open to it. Right. So tell them one more time the name of your album. Painkillers Be Loaded. And I really want y'all to get in that. I, mean, I got I to gotta tell you the, the, the definition behind that, too. Okay, like, please do. I look at it like everybody's numb. I feel like everybody's disconnected. You don't feel anything anywhere. You got the internet, Facebook, you're watching the news all day, you're just numb. You don't feel anything anymore. So normally when you're in pain, you take a painkiller so that you can feel numb. You're already numb. So now I try to create a product that make you feel something again. I got to restore some type of feeling. You don't, you're disconnected all day. You don't feel anything. Think about it. You can watch the news, somebody gets shot. You're like, oh, what's on? What's on? What's for, what's for dinner? It doesn't connect with you. Nothing registers. Right. We've, we've, Instant gratification. So... You want everything now, and you're just buying downloads. And it's like you're busy. Your brain is busier than your body. You feel nothing. So I'm like, take time, listen to the project, get into it, man. And, and, and what I did, too, with this project, I collaborated with this artist named Misha. So all my covers for every single is actually like a painting. You know what I'm wow. saying? Like the actual cover of the album is like a, a four by four foot painting that, that you can hang in a gallery. That um, that I bought to hang up. And wow. We just took a picture of it and made it a cover. So That's it was like amazing. a real experience when you buy the project. It's not just I'm not just trying to sell downloads. I want you to feel something. You know what I mean? So that's that's awesome, man. And and, and you really said that well too, because we are so numb by it. Literally, people using drugs, which you know some people need, some people don't need, but they do. Right. And and the fact that we are now so numb to so many things. Painkillers sure. Reloaded. It's out right now. Word. Graph. Um, thank you for coming through all day, man. Thank you for Thanks continuing for to make good music over all these years. Put on for the city. I must do that. How can people contact you if they want to contact you? Hit me on that Instagram, man. If you're listening right now, definitely check it out. Instagram is graph G R A F H. 
The website is Graph Online, G R A F H. You can spell online by your damn self. You should be able to. You know what I'm Otherwise, you got you bigger problems. Yeah, yeah, you got bigger problems than that. But definitely get in tune, man. When you go online, you see everything I'm doing, man. Follow your boy, boy, boy. Get that album. Support dope hip hop. Support dope New York hip hop. And that's what it is. What are you trying to get him to plug also? Snapchat? So oh, God damn, I be forgetting this. Yeah, real quick, too, with the trap with the trap phone song. I got a phone number that I give out, right, that I want people to text and stay in the loop with me, man. So you get, you know, tickets to the shows, free goods, and I, and I give you all the music before I give it to the public. So just so, the, so people can actually hit your trap phone? They can hit the trap line right, uh, right all now. All right, what's the number? So the number is uh, 718-557-9259. Well, nice. One more time. These are people who want to reach out to you direct. They can. Yeah, text me. You got to text it, though. You know what I'm saying? So 718 557 Nine two five nine. Stay loopy with the squad. Yup, hit the trap. Hit that trap phone. Yo, thank you, Graf. All day, man. Thank you, G. Yep.